While Basel Committee requires to inform authorities if you breach the liquidity requirements, EU requests to inform authorities if banks expect not to meet the liquidity requirements. This means that banks need to project their situation in the future and check whether they will meet in those projections the liquidity requirements or not. Asia-Pacific is really leading in liquidity risk with the implementation of the NSFR. China, Hong Kong, Singapore, Australia, Indonesia, they have all implemented NSFR. In North America, Canada has already implemented NSFR, while in the US we are still with a draft regulation. In EMEA, while Russia or South Africa have implemented NSFR, the European Union imposed the NSFR to be implemented by July 2021 as part of the CRD5. Of course, there are the operational challenges of collecting new data, implementing a compliance system, doing all that in due time to meet the regulatory deadline. But the first key point is the fact that liquidity requirements need to be met on an ongoing basis. This means that the process to execute NSFR calculation must be done on a daily basis or at any requested time. And this has three implications, data quality, automation and performance. And all these elements are required for a proper NSFR solution. But continuous measurement is not enough. Banks need to project liquidity requirements in the future. And this is really integration of compliance and liquidity risk management. There is no way to meet these requirements if you compute proxy values of LCR or NSFR. Those ratios have such detailed rules that not applying them properly would give irrelevant results. This really means that banks need to have correct, exact regulatory calculation of LCR and SFR on these business scenarios. The first thing to do is to break the silos in your mind and really consider holistically compliance and liquidity risk management. They need really to go together. Then you need to plan because that does not happen in a day. So you need to plan the implementation of a solution that does first a continuous measurement of the liquidity metrics, LCR and SFR, that does the exact regulatory calculation also onto the future of the LSTR and SFR and also because liquidity does not move between countries and between entities as easily you also need to have a group approach of that liquidity risk management. There is a nice window of opportunity for European banks. They have to implement the LCR Delegated Act by April 2020. This is already defined. With CRD5, they have to implement an SFR by July 2021 and also the expect not to meet requirement. So the best way forward is to implement the LCR Delegated Act for next year with a solution that already combines the compliance and the liquidity risk management aspects. This is the most cost-effective and the smoothest way to improve your liquidity risk management and to be compliant in due time. Finance is all about risk-return relationship. So if you better manage your risk, then you better manage your return. Compliance with NSFR and LCR 
is improving your liquidity risk management, and especially when you integrate them. And so if you better manage your liquidity risk, you better manage your return. More concretely, a better insight and a better forecast of the key liquidity risk components, such as viability risk or risk from early redemption, could save you substantial cost outlay. If you combine that with the implementation of a fund transfer pricing, where liquidity margin is a key element, this would make those business benefits more visible. Compliance requirements are looking for a proper liquidity risk management. Whether in the EU with the expect not to meet requirements or the UK Prudential Regulation Authority with the PRA 1110, they are all aiming at a forward-looking liquidity risk management. And by the way, this is not only true for liquidity. Actually, supervisor want a forward-looking Basel IV compliance. The future of liquidity risk management lays in integration. First, in integration with regulatory metrics and regulatory requirements into the daily risk management, breaking the wall between compliance and risk. And second, it lays with the integration into the group entity structure in order to take into account the limitation of liquidity movements, combining exact regulatory metrics with liquidity risk management on current situation and on future business projections.